Hi, I'm Cynthia Schiller, and I promise you this is going to be a must watch. It helps us understand a mental illness and also sometimes when we have low self-esteem. So this is going to be in response to a viewer who had reached out to me, told me his story and uh, asked, you know, is something wrong with me? And I made a video and he had said a response and this is what his response was. We're going to get into it a little bit more. It is a must watch. Uh, so he says, I guess I was clingy in the eyes of narc one, two, and three. I'm sure reaching out to them ever again will just cause them to label me as clingy. So he recognizes, which is very good. He recognizes some of the things that can kind of push people away. There is that push-pull dynamic that when we start getting too clingy, that it does push other people away. He says, I can deal, I can say I was dealing with so low self-esteem and it happened right around the downward spiral. And that is what happens with narcissists is they knock down our self-esteem and it does cause that downward spiral because um, they get a feel off of us uh, being clingy and then us pushing a away. It throws the dynamics off. If things are even keel, it's okay. Uh, but when we get too clingy, they don't want to deal with our needs it's irritating to them it brings them back to their childhood so uh, this person is going to be telling me about their triggers and in understanding narcissism that is their trigger it brings them back to their childhood when they're like please love me please love me and they didn't get the love that they needed so that's how that works and why it goes south so he felt he was a failure since he wasn't a famous actor yet, which is something that's important to him. He's trying uh, to find his identity and his identity needs to be in his here and now, but he's, he's trying, um, it's, it's something in him that maybe he respects actors or it's a dream of his and he doesn't feel like he's come to his full self until he reaches that. But uh, he says, and because I was dealing with the situation with the narc family who tried to get me arrested because I had sent a few. So there's, um, a few, which I don't know how many that is. Uh, I don't know if he's minimizing it or if it was several. A lot of times when we get into that uh, neediness, I've done it too. I called way too many times. Um, not just a few, but he says a few harassing messages to their daughter who had been mean a decade prior. So, uh, and when he tried to explain his story of mental illness they stigma stigmatized him so he had asked me uh is there anything wrong with me and i have basically said you know in in a general population people who have dealt with narcissistic abuse there is kind of something wrong with us we're either depressed anxious going through cptsd and we need to heal so he reached out to me and asked what I thought. I told him what I thought. And if this is you watching, this is said with so much love. And, um, you know, he's in the end of the thing, you're going to see that he is thinking it's time to go. He doesn't want to deal with the triggers. So I think it's important to deal with the triggers. I am showing love. I am showing in a kind way, uh, especially when my opinion was asked for. And I am here as a YouTuber. I'm uh, certified to teach psychology. I'm not a clinician, but this is my opinion. And I say it uh, kindly. I've never passed judgment on him. I've always uh, reassured him. It's okay. You can say whatever you need to say to me. I'm not going to judge any of you. You know, you can tell me some freaky stuff, some uh, uh, off the wall stuff that maybe you shouldn't have done. I'm not going to judge you. We're going to analyze what happened. So I'm just analyzing and it's just my opinion um, and it doesn't affect how much I care about you or, or, or uh, want to help you. So anyways, he, he does realize, you know, and he says a few harassing messages. So he does recognize that it was more than was wanted. Um, it was over a decade ago. So I don't know if he means for the last 10 years. I think it was the decade prior. I think it was. 10 years ago, because he's been trying to sum up some of his pain from all the different relationships he's had over time that have fallen apart. And a lot of them are either uh, he has misled people um, and then uh, either uh, been too clingy or uh, things. He does say he has mental illness. So he's asking me, 
is there something wrong with me? And I said it kindly. You know, I did say there's probably some comorbidities. I'm just being honest with you. I am seeing certain things. Plus, I remember he has told me before some mental illness that he's struggling with. So when I say I, I, I kind of see that, you know, maybe there is something more. Um, he already knows he has it. And since I said it, he wanted me to say the opposite. And and uh, so he continues saying, I was dealing with low self-esteem while ruminating about narcs one and three to narc two before she got exhausted with me and discarded me. I won't be commenting on your chance. So uh, this is kind of a defense mechanism he's going through, which is fine. I just want to analyze it so he understands it. And so you guys can understand a little bit about what happens when people are dealing uh, with some pain. He's dealing with some pain. So he acknowledges it. He knows he has some low self-esteem. I've told him, uh, you know, don't put your identity in if you are an actor, because that can come and go in a heartbeat. You get one big movie deal and uh, you might not get any more, you know, and we have to be realistic about it or, um, you know, uh, he, so he goes, I won't be commenting on your channel anymore as hearing certain words still trigger me. You're basically saying narcs one and three were right when they called me clingy, though that was never my intention. And that's fine. When uh, I did that, when I called ridiculous amounts of time, um, it was seen as clingy. I have to admit that. And I get that the trigger words, I don't like it if my friends say it either, but it's the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. So. I'm trying to show love and he's running from it. He has some triggers and that's also what our narcissist will do. I'm not calling him a narcissist. He does seem to have a big heart, um, but he's starting to feel like I am passing judgment on him. So he continues saying, thank you for advice and keeping my identity confidential because I've never called out his name. Um, and, you know, he knows uh, that I... Uh, respond to these messages and i'm not passing see this is a thing you ask for my opinion opinion um it, it gets tricky words uh you know uh different interpretations but i'm not uh you know you can judge me i'm six foot one you're gonna judge me as tall doesn't mean you're gonna like me or not like me you're gonna judge me as tall you're gonna judge me as having long hair um you know i can fit into the uh tall blonde or whatever my hair's starting to get dark but the tall blonde category you know but if you judge me on who i am as a person um and I guess I can see what he's saying. He is clingy. Um, you know, I'm a teacher. I deal with all kinds of kids. I get deal with kids that are dismissive, kids that are clingy, kids that are even keel. And it doesn't change how uh, I care about them. I care about them as children the same for the most part. You, we all have a little bit of favorites or whatever, but um, they're all treated the same. And I'm just here to, to help and uh you see that he does recognize what's triggering him so that's a healthy step that is a healthy step but to run from it instead of deal with it um because he 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 didn't like my answer he didn't like my answer so he doesn't want to deal with it and i'm here uh to be helpful so he's turning away the help and, you know, not saying he's a narcissist, like I said, he has a very kind heart, but even the narcissists uh, are going to run from any type of uh, counseling, uh, you have to really want it. And he's hurt so much that he wants to hear that, you know, uh, a lot of YouTubers will say it's not your fault. And it's not your fault the abuse started, we have to be realistic that there are things that we did out of character. It was in reaction. It was in reaction. It's that reactive abuse, but it still causes and adds to. Let me take away the word causes. It adds to. It adds to that downward spiral. And we just get a, an overload of our brain just going berserko. Same with the narcissist that we're not thinking straight. We got that brain fog because now we have, um, you know, uh, 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 some brain damage going on 
And so I had mentioned, you know, if these people are truly narcissists, you probably did have CPTSD or at least depression and anxiety. And he's admitting to all this stuff. And then he's telling me, I'm, I'm not going to be commenting anymore. I'm going to go. Uh, he does recognize that there are triggers, but he's turning away the people that care about him. He's going to go to somebody else who is going to, um, you know, kind of, kind of say what he wants to hear that it's okay. And, and it happened, whatever happened, happened, but, um, you even say you're struggling with mental illness and, uh, you're going to leave somebody who cares about you. And it's okay if you want to do that. That's your choice. But you're going to leave this channel. People who care, want to support you um, because it's easier. And it's uh, triggering your shame. And it's not working through it if you walk away from it. So, um, you know, sometimes too, it might be easy for him to say, see you later, because he knows he'll come back and say, will you still help me? And that's what I'm here for. But we have to realize there's been several times he's trying to detach um, from this channel, but he comes back and he says, you were right. And other people have uh, said the same things as you. But when I say that one thing that triggers him, um, he didn't want to hear he's clingy. But he says, you know, I've been sending harassing messages to the point I almost got arrested. I'm struggling with low self-esteem, mental illness. And he is upset that people stigma stigmatized him. And I get that. I understand it. Um, but uh, am I stigmatizing you by telling you what the issue is? You know, um, it's just like uh, a doctor saying you have cancer. And that has nothing to do with how much they like or or or, or don't like you. Um, they're going to treat you and they're going to do the best that they can. And it's not personal. Uh, maybe a husband or wife might be, do I want to deal with this cancer? Do I want to pay for it? Do I want to be by their side? Are they going to be disformed, uh, figured? But it, it's, it's a different relationship where I am just here for advice, guidance, support, a loving, safe place to tell people your feelings or to tell me your feelings, have it analyzed. He's been hurting for a while. And, um, you know, I am trying to understand his perspective because I, I will always uh, have my perspective too, or my questions or things that I don't quite understand um, that I try to address it in the right way, um, you know, and... Uh, it just shows that people don't like those triggers. People don't like the triggers, so they run from it. I could, he could say, how do I deal with this? Or um, why do you say that? Uh, but he's just like, I don't want to hear it anymore. But he's the one that asked me. And I did one video. And that they can be quick to discard in a sense. Um, I don't, I know he doesn't mean it with a, a mean heart. I know I'm, I'm just a YouTuber, uh, but we do have like a, a relationship where I do care about my subscribers, my viewers, even if you're not subscribed, but um, you know, he, he realizes he has low self-esteem and that's why he wants to run because um you know, I, I, you know, with, with, with all due respect, I agree. Just like if you broke your leg, your legs sticking out, you're like, I think I broke my leg. And I say, I agree. And then you get mad at me for agreeing when it, the, it, the evidence is right there. Um, so this is meant with a lot of love, but I hope it gets you into the mind of somebody who is struggling with mental illness um, the narcissist will do the same thing and we kind of do it too sometimes not all of us but we're like screw it I'm out of here you know and we have to protect ourselves but uh, from abuse but I'm not abusing him and you know just like when we're trying to help our narcissist we're not abusing them in that moment they 
take away the reactive abuse when we're really trying to connect with them. It's not with ill intent. It's not trying to hurt them. So I'm just going to say to my viewer that I've enjoyed this last year. You've been wonderful. I have always known you have a kind heart. There's just some things that in order to get along with other people, there's some adjustments that need to be made, you know, um, because people have certain expectations or comfort levels, or they have their own triggers too, you know, and um, I just, uh, I understand he didn't want to hear that. I understand that, but it is the truth. And uh, he reached out like, is something wrong? And it would have been a, a, a relief to him if I said, no, nothing's wrong, but something is wrong. And he's even said it. And uh, I did say, I think he has comorbidities. Like he, he's got that low self-esteem. He's admitted to it. And a history of people uh, not staying and of discarding him. That uh, narcissists are a whole different breed, but the people he, he, he latches on and there is some growing to where if you utilize, excuse me, you utilize the push pull dynamics that the people who are meant to stay in your life will stay in your life. The people who are meant to go away will go away. Um, you have to learn that push pull. You have to live in the moment or manifest the future. It, it's a different way of thinking. So when your words come out, they come out the right way, not to repel people. Um, you know, just uh, the energy exchange, uh, the word choice. Um, you know, if you're like, you probably don't want to hang out with me, then they're like, yeah, you kind of sound like a bummer. Or as opposed to you saying, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Hopefully uh, we can get together on Saturday. It, it's a different thing. Or I see us going, uh, I don't know, out for coffee in the next month. It's just a positive energy as opposed to like, poor pity me. I'm probably a loser. And so, and, and that puts them in the power um, and the adoration where we feel we suck. And, and if we're beneath them, people usually pair up uh, a little bit more equivalent uh, and that takes away the pressure of the dynamics of who's in power um you know some people are submissive and stuff there's all different things but usually uh in today's society you know but the, the main point is is um people run from love when they hurt you know and he's kind of lashing back in a sense where i'm just leaving I'm just leaving. At least he addressed it. So that's fine. He can send that boundary. Um, and that's a strong person to say. But uh, you kind of wonder too, did he want me to, did did he want to hear? Um, don't go. Don't go. Uh, he's needing some attention. He wants some love. He wants some uh, confirmation. He's a good person. And he is. He just needs to uh, build that self-esteem up, not from other people, from himself and not from getting, uh, an acting deal, you know, that, uh, he has to adjust the things that, um, make him, him. And, you know, if, if his identity is an actor, I've encouraged him to go to auditions and because of, the low self-esteem, uh, he might be talking himself out of that or feeling he's never going to get a part. And it's the negative thinking that will prevent him from getting an acting job. So, you know, I've given him suggestions on start out at like a local community theater uh, and, and, you know, work your way up. I had a cousin who I went to she she's a model and she went to a uh, uh like an uh, audition for extras in a movie and she actually got the leading role in this it's like a B movie um not you know a uh, top top movie but a, a way up there movie uh she went there just to be an extra and she got the lead role 
and she's not an actress. She's a model. She's going to acting school. Um, I'll let you guys know if you want, comment below, and I'll tell you what the movie is. It's not out yet, so I don't think it has an active name. Uh, should be out in a couple months, I think. But she's taking the steps. Uh, she's believing in herself, and um, it's falling into place for her. And he's never going to get an acting job sitting on the couch. He has to do the groundwork. Um, but he also has to realize, you know, some people don't have that dream come true, but it, it shouldn't go to his worth. So I hope this video was helpful. I just thought it gave some insight on how people react when they don't hear what they want to hear or things need to be corrected or why people who are struggling walk away from the people that love them and uh it's he needs that self-love you know um because then he wouldn't have said what he said he'd stick around you know or go about his business he's healed enough where he doesn't need to chit chat with us anymore but the healing process takes time don't run from it that's what he wants to do right now and i don't think that's the wisest choice so lots of love no judgment it's love. And uh, comment below on what you think. Hope to see you guys soon. Feel free to like and subscribe. Topic requests are always welcome. I also do one-on-ones. And I hope to see you in live chat. See you soon.